Thank you so much. I'm most delighted to stand here on stage to share with you 15 minutes. Here you see this is a now robot. Uh, pretty interesting thing. If you do not know how to program, this is basically just a, a skeleton. It won't work. But if you learn programming, then you're going to do a lot of interesting things. We're going to show this uh, later today. Uh, I'm here to tell you what we are doing is uh, driving students' innovations. Why student? Second, why innovations? What if uh, everybody in our next generation we all know how to code? This is my question I pose to all of you. What if everybody in this room actually know the meaning of all these words? For example, copyright, entrepreneurship, uh, aspiration, research, planning, all these interesting terms. We want to enable our next generation learn all these keywords. What do we really get from our next generation? What do you see from them? I see three important points. Strong will, they've got the time, they've got persistency, right? But how do we actually connect them with our next uh, future? This is what the world is heading to. Why do I put up all these uh, flags here? As you know, in US, there's a campaign ongoing. The campaign is uh, hours of code. They're going to make sure everybody already do the programming. And in UK, uh, two years ago, they already changed the curriculum. All the primary school students, they all need to learn coding. That's in UK, Singapore. And do you know what is this flat? Estonia. They already put this in the curriculum, yes. What about uh, Hong Kong? Well, how are we heading to? As you can see, we've got different companies that are doing coding, they are doing uh, little kids coding. How small can actually a uh, little kid learn coding? Can we say a uh, little baby? For example, my daughter. My daughter, she is uh, five years old. Do you think I'm able to teach her coding? The answer is yes. I put ITE here. What's ITE? It means if, then, else. If the daughter is uh, pretty happy, then I give her something nice. If she's kind of naughty, then I do something, uh, maybe, not give her candy, right? So this is uh, something very simple logic. We are able to teach our new, new generation with something very simple. Uh, in Hong Kong, what we are doing is this community. We call this uh, CTU Apps Lab, uh, the lab that we are running at CTU. We've got people, just like today. Everybody in this room, we all learn coding. Imagine what will be the impact. The impact is not putting one and one together. It's going to be massive. It's going to be creative. For example, you can see uh, the, the student uh, right here uh, on the left hand side. He is a guy from Nigeria. He's able to share with uh, other students uh, his programming experience on wearable technology. We are creating this uh, um, community. As you can see, we started this uh, from last year. But the curve is not rising with uh, some, some jump, jumping. And we believe this is going to be a major trend. We believe this is what we call a community-based learning. How do we actually get this started? I start this with a small course project. And this course project, you can see, uh, is something like a Candy Crush. How many of you played Candy Crush before? Some of you, yes. And I believe most of you may not know how the logic behind works, which we say that there's something called cascading. There's some recursion ongoing. So we say that the student, after 10 weeks lesson, they're able to create this kind of coding with their own styles. So we want to enable them to, to do a cost project, but on the other hand, they can create their own games. How to strengthen the skills? That would be the important question I pose to all of you. We believe teaching others is the best way to learn to you. This is a powerful statement. How do we do it? Uh, in the summer, our 
program or we can call has been featured on uh, BBC Live. This is an interview, a uh, couple of minutes. But we are telling the world that we are doing Hong Kong, coding is the third language. And you can see those uh, students, after they take the program, they get on the BBC uh, digital broadcast on radio, and they are quite enjoying doing it. So, what is our model? How do we make this happen? As you can see, there are a lot of students right here. We put them into three different parts. The first part, of course, is the students, right? Let's say we've got around 30 students. To make sure everybody gets started to learn coding, we need a couple of tutors. And all these tutors, they're all the city abstract uh, member. And we've got this uh, voluntary uh, instructor. So each uh, more experienced student they will be taking turns to instruct the class. And we believe this is not just one way deep learning. Take a look at this uh, slide. The statement from the right hand side, you can see this is what he called unforgettable experience to teach Android programming. Take a look on the uh, left hand side. The, the student at the center, he told me that he already programmed an app on the table. It's going to lock everybody's home. It's not, uh, everybody is not going to touch the phone when we eat. So he's building that kind of app after the workshop. And the student on uh, the tall one, the tall guy, he's starting his own company. So we are also rolling out this uh, kind of program to different groups. For example, we've got teachers we can call uh, seniors. We're targeting groups of over 60s. Is there anybody over 60s here? Some, yes. So we are targeting you. <laughs> Thank you. And you can see learning with a senior elders is fun because you can see those students and also the senior, they're working together, they're pushing each other forward. And we already have this kind of model available uh, on campus. As I mentioned, when we target different groups of people, we are going to create different types of apps or different types of software. In the future, every single chair, everything will be recorded, internet of things. We need a software. Today we've got an app, maybe tomorrow we don't have an app, but the software itself will change. So you see this is a doctor's, we can call it. Uh, tomorrow we are having a press conference with uh, these uh, chiropractic doctors and for this final check. We may sit too long, we want to do some stretching, we want to make sure your back is upright. So we, our students will develop this uh, uh, spinal track app to make sure to check whether your spine is uh, is okay or not. So this is what we call a three tier model. At the bottom, we want the training part. We want to make sure everybody got the skill set, the training we can code. In the middle, we put the student with more experience to do the coding, to do the projects. And at the end, our, our hope, and in fact, many industry, many staff people talk to me and say, do you have good students? I say, we are incubating them. We are trying to give them to you. So, how do we actually move the data up? We don't want to build some kind of constraints. We want to do something more meaningful. This is a more advanced workshop that we offer. So, everybody may already use a WhatsApp. So, how do we actually prototype a WhatsApp? Can we do it in eight hours? Yes, we can. This is a workshop we offer to a group of students in two weeks. Uh, actually, two lessons, eight hours. We are planning to open up this kind of software to the community so everybody can actually start at a much higher line. We don't need to uh, do things uh, repeatedly. This is uh, another robot, and I think you may know our chief executive. He is actually holding a robot hand, and that actually comes from a student's project. So how does this uh, robotic hand work? This is how it works. So as I mentioned, this is the course project. The student in a group of five, they develop this robot head. Pretty awesome, right? I thought one more interesting thing to show you. So it's going to hold uh, the bottom. So we say inside the robot head, there's a software running over there. This is another robot. Let's see what it does. 
，所以是所有的人都改出来。这是魔法风，我讲的魔法风是看到我们丢的，是关注我们的魔法，每天看到魔法，这是什么？白色的力量。And on the other side, there's a reader. It's going to read what is the total number of points from all these three lines, and it's going to add this up. Okay, not too bad. So you can imagine this kind of robot can be applied to a car, right? So it's twenty three names, and on the other hand, it will read out the number. So this is what we call. So I like it. I think it's very cool. So we believe uh, Hong Kong got a lot of talents. Henry, could you make the robot move? Yeah, out. <laughs> it's okay. You have that. <laughs> okay, Henry, try again. Oh, I think it's fine. <laughs> All right, but I want to show you. Right. So I'm going to show you. Uh, this is uh, actually a robot controlled by my student over there. And the interesting point is that this robot is now solely controlled by a robot phone. And it will wake up by itself, maybe. Later, I will show you later. So, what we want to show you is basically this kind of robot or apps. Everything behind is a software. We want to create this uh, atmosphere and let everybody learn how to code. And if you're able to code, you simply you can speak Chinese, English, and encode it. Because of the time, so I don't go uh, too much uh, detail, but I'm going to show you we've got this abstract community. We're serving not just CTU with other faculties in the university. For some of this is what we call mobility app. Try to track your events every day. And maybe with this kind of big data, we can improve our road systems. Because we're going to track out how you move around in the city every day. We also create an app with a Rotary International. This is an organ donation app, our students. And next one, this is what we call the orientation app. This kind of app, we are campus-wide orientation app, also designed by our students. We also work with uh, uh, some commercial band. The idea is we want to connect our students with the industry. So this one is with our DBS bank. So what is our long-term um, perspective? As I mentioned, we believe coding is really a basic skill set. And this is going to be really uh, international. Okay, not just uh, Hong Kong, everybody in the world we are looking into this direction. And we believe today, if you want to uh, enable yourself and create some new value, this is what we should have to. And we hope that um, we need to create a big community so we can learn much faster. You don't want to lock in the door in your room and you learn yourself. As I mentioned, in the old days, we thought computer today we use mobile phone. What's next? We believe web technology will be the next wave. You are not going to hold your mobile phone every day, but all these small gadgets carrying around you with the software will be able to get a lot of data from you, and this is going to be uh, the next wave. We hope, as I mentioned, innovation is uh, something new. We want to create that. So thanks for listening.